That was former Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole delivering his farewell speech in the House of Commons just not long ago, calling out, as you heard there, clickbait politics and warning against the risk of chasing likes on social media. O'Toole was ousted as Tory leader early last year after failing to lead the party to a win in the 2021 election and facing internal criticism over what some in his party characterize as flip-flops on issues like the carbon tax and firearms. O'Toole, an MP since 2012, will step down from his Durham, Ontario seat at the end of this spring sitting of Parliament. Let's bring back the front bench to talk about what you just heard. Miriam Monsef, Melanie Parody, Kathleen Monk and Laura Stone. Melanie, I'll start with you since you did work for Aaron O'Toole for a really, I think you said in the break, seven years. Uh, the, I, I thought that comment certainly jumped out at me, this idea that chasing those likes is contributing to the polarization that I think everyone on this panel and, and many Canadians watching will be really familiar with right now. Why was that something, do you think, that Mr. O'Toole wanted to say to Canadians today? Uh, well, I, so uh, as you noted, I worked for Aaron O'Toole for over seven years, both his 2016 slash 2017 leadership race, again in, in 2020, um, when came to Ottawa to work for him when he was the leader. Um, and what has always been true is that honor above all things is his one of his personal mottos. Um, it's something that he lived every single day. Um, and he's always grappled with um, the just the visceral nature of, of social media politics and how divisive it is. And in his leadership campaign, he talked about how divided the country has become. And that was back in 2020. That was before um, COVID, really at the beginning of, of COVID. Um, and it has only become so much worse since, like, throughout. And really, his leadership was the entirety of, of the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't actually get to meet his caucus in person until after the election in 2021, because everyone was uh, was working remotely. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, we we weren't allowed to have gatherings. Um, so it was a very difficult period of time to, to be the leader. Um, but he watched intently during that time as people became more divided and just more um, aggressive in the things that they would say online to one another that you would never say to someone's face. But now we're starting to see some of that bleed into real life where people now think it's appropriate to treat other human beings um, the way that they do online, but in real life. And that's getting pretty scary. Uh, and our politics is reflecting that. And so what, one of the things he was trying to say today to Canadians and to the parliamentarians in the room with him was Parliament needs to set the example for Canada. Mm -hmm. um, Parliament and parliamentarians who are elected um, by, by their constituents to go and represent them need to serve with honour and they need to serve with purpose. He spoke a lot about our national right. purpose and the, and the need to be united, even as uh, members of, of the opposition uh, need, to, uh, need to oppose and need to challenge the government and hold them to account. There's a way to do that um, that still upholds the honour of, of the position that you're in as a parliamentarian and the honour of, of this great country. I'm interested, Miriam, to hear what you think, listening to that, being having spent time in Parliament, in Cabinet, and if, I think being the target of a lot of vitriol on social media, um, you know, what, what, when you, what's going through your head as you hear uh, Mr. O'Toole say that? Well, my, my baby and I watched Mr. O'Toole's speech, and I don't agree with so much uh, when it comes to Mr. O'Toole's stance on situations, but he has family here in my area, and they're lovely, kind people, they're generous people, and his service to his country is commendable. He's a veteran, and, you know, it was good to see um, his party behind him today for his farewell speech, because despite all the ways I disagree with the man, I thought that the way he was ousted was unkind and unfair. As for his message, I agree 100 percent with Melanie that we have seen, particularly in recent years, a certain level of disrespect and dishonor in some quarters take over the political discourse in our country. And that disrespect and dishonor, as Mr. O'Toole rightly pointed out, has the strong ability, and indeed it has in many ways, to shape the public's attitude about politicians.
And it has the ability to incite all forms of political violence. And if we're not careful, and I think there was a subtext there to current leaders who use algorithms to court all sorts of unhelpful uh, partners to democracy. If we're not careful, we're going to look back, as Aaron said, in a few years and think, my God, what have we done to this country? So I appreciated that message. And I think there are a lot of current and former politicians who, you know, may not agree with all of Mr. O'Toole's positions, but really appreciated what he had to say today. In some parts of the speech, Kathleen, it wasn't even just subtext, right? There was, for example, Mr. O'Toole saying, the UN, the WEF, yeah. like, it, like it's, it's not a conspiracy theory. There are institutions that, that you know, should be criticized, sure, and, and scrutinized, sure, but they're trying to do good things. And it's the same thing Miriam just said, like there, there's a long-term effect of peddling in the, that kind of politics, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I guess what I was thinking is he was saying it, which is, is kind of not in my nature, but it sort of was in my gut as a, as a skeptic in this instance, is like, is it already too late? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> Don't call me a Pollyanna for saying uh, that. No, but no, I, really I hope, hope not, not, too. Yeah, but I mean, but I, the things he was, he was saying are so yeah. endemic to certain quarters of, the, of politics is, right now. It is now. true. But he was good at really drawing a through line, a historical through line, saying, listen, you know, we have to look at history and, and, and take the role that we have here in the House with such importance and care for it. And what I thought was remarkable about that, particularly coming from Mr. O'Toole, Mr. O'Toole was subject to a brutal uh, execution as leader, right? He had, had a very short term uh, as leader uh, of the Conservative Party. And he took the opportunity on his closing speech to actually try to rally, actually, other members of Parliament to basically to do better. And in and, and, and doing that, you know, like like I said last Monday on the show, you know, stop using this House and, and the need to, to uh, you know, improve our country as just an area, you know, to, to do content creation for social media, right? Like, our, our speeches are driven by that as opposed to the purpose of making Canadians live better. Point out a couple other things. You know, he cited a few um, conservative politicians, all really, in my opinion, are more, more like red Tories, right? The real progressive conservatives. Jim Flaherty, he mentioned. He mentioned Ed Vass, more centrist in their party, kind of saying these are the only people he actually cited by name in addition to, to Prime Minister Harper. So I wonder, is he not trying to push his party back to a more center area? And, you know, I, I wish Mr. O'Toole well. I, like others on the panel, didn't always agree with him, but I think that the way he was ousted in the beginning of 2020 was, was remarkable and, frankly, jaw-dropping. What kind of, uh, Laura, or, uh, I guess optimism do you have that some of his message may actually resonate given the sort of like I guess dominance of social media right like I you know I, I I'm not trying to excuse behavior of course of anyone but the fact is we're all sort of hostage in some way to social media and the kind of reactions that it it generates as much as we try to resist it well, I, I feel like we're heading in the total opposite direction. I mean, I, I commend Mr. O'Toole for his words. I think that should, you know, and the responses as well to him from Mark Holland and other politicians should be required yeah. viewing. Yeah. It's, it's just, it is, I don't, I don't want to be cheesy, but it's heartwarming to see all the sides kind of talk about each other in very human tones and relate to one another. But my reaction when I watched Aaron O'Toole's speech was like, Pierre Pollyon is right there. <laughs> like chasing algorithms, <laughs> likes, like clicks. That's that's essentially um, what the new conservative leader is doing. And I'm not saying the liberals don't do it either. They have their own videos and things like this. And, and you know, we see they're all using social media. But I think like where Polyev is really differentiating, differentiating himself is his use of social media. And he's trying to get you know strike a younger tone. And he's he's a very partisan leader. And I think where you saw kind of O'Toole fault was while he ran a, a conservative leadership campaign, he presented himself as a moderate in the campaign. And, you know, things yeah. turned out how they turned out and the, and the party turned on him. And I think people view Mr. Polyev as a true partisan conservative. And he's really heading in that direction of, you know, kind of, I don't want to term, use the term nasty, but nasty kind of political attacks. And we've seen some things he's even said in the House about the prime minister. Again, I'm not saying that all sides don't do it. They absolutely do. But I was sort of jarred by, is he sending a message not only to the House, but to the current state of, of the Conservative Party, and in particular, Mr. Polly as leader.